Waters running uncontrolled squander the riches of the countryside through which they rush along. Build a wall across the rivers they form and their potential wealth is imprisoned to good purpose. In South India, the Nizam Sagar Dam across the Manjura River has brought prosperity to many parts of Hyderabad state. The Krishna Raja Sagar Dam on the Kaveri is responsible to a great extent for the progress of Mysore state. The Metur Dam also across the Kaveri has helped to enrich the historic town of Tanjore and the surrounding region. A few hundred miles away from Tanjore flows the Tungabhadra through the remnants of the famous forgotten empire of Vijayanagar, an empire that flourished some four centuries ago. But in the days to come, this deserted land will flourish once more, for the Tungabhadra holds the key to its prosperity. The 1st July 1953, a red letter day in the achievement of the 400 million rupee Tungabhadra project. Today takes place the opening of one of the canals that leads off from the dam. The honor of ushering the waters into the new canal falls to the oldest inhabitant on hand, a humble peasant who, like so many others, stands to gain much from this giant scheme. He and his kind beseech the deity of the river to bless the project so that prosperity comes to a land long shrouded in drought. Since the dawn of time, the Tungabhadra has run its course through this arid land of scrub and stone. Why has the land then not blossomed into fertility? Herein lies our story. The river gets its name from the confluence of the Tunga and the Bhadra. Their waters mingle near Kudali village, eight miles from Shimoga in Mysore state. Tunga and the Bhadra are fed by the copious rains of the southwest monsoon. But only a modicum of these abundant waters was ever utilized in the plains, where the rains average only 20 inches annually. In the 19th century, famine occurred 10 times in this area while from 1900 to 1940, eight famines have been recorded. These manifestations of misery are due to a lack of rainfall and a lack of opportunity to tap the river waters. The people suffered in Ryalseema because of the water shortage. Many migrated when faced with drought and death. For the past 100 years, scheme after scheme has been proposed to save Ryal Seema from the water shortage. Bellari district in Mysore state, Raichur district in Hyderabad state, and Anantapur, Kadapa, and Karnool in Andhra have repeatedly suffered from drought. The present project was evolved in 1944 when a provisional agreement was reached between the governments of Hyderabad and the composite state of Madras. The Tungabhadra Dam is located at Malapuram, three miles from the town of Hospet. Here the river cuts through the Sandur Hills. The dam has closed the gap. Built of masonry, it is 6,007 feet long and at the lowest foundations, 160 feet high. Besides the dam, this multi-purpose project consists of two canals. The one on the Andhra Mysore side, 217 miles long, will irrigate about 250,000 acres. The other in Hyderabad, and 127 miles long, will irrigate 570,000 acres. The reservoir formed by the dam has a water spread of 146 square miles. This is the largest masonry dam and storage reservoir yet built in India. The center spillway is of granite blocks bound with cement. During floods, the surplus water will be disposed of through 33 spillway gates, each 60 feet wide and 20 feet high. The dam is nearly complete. 
The spillway gates are now being installed. The factory for making the gates exists right at the site of the dam, an asset that is unique in India. Up to October 1953, the project was a combined undertaking of the governments of Hyderabad and Madras. Now the responsibility is shared by Hyderabad, Andhra and Mysore. The planners, the engineers, the entire personnel of this project are Indian. All these men from the different states have worked throughout as a harmonious team. It has been a unique experiment in state cooperation, in joint planning and construction, proving a success beyond expectations. The Tungabhadra project is mainly concerned with irrigation, but the water will also be used for generating hydropower. The total power generated on the Andhra Mysore side and the Hyderabad side will be 108,000 kilowatts. On the Mysore Andhra side, the canal is used for power up to the 14th mile. Thereafter, called the low level canal, it is used for irrigation. The construction of the first seven miles of canal is no mean engineering feat, for it consisted of cutting rock and tunneling and the building of reinforced concrete aqueducts. A hundred and sixty-five such aqueducts and under tunnels had to be built. The irrigation aqueduct that spans the Hagri River is the longest in India, having a length of 2,287 feet. The Ramasagaram tunnel through which the canal passes is 1120 feet in length. The canal on the Hyderabad side runs through rugged terrain for the first 19 miles. Further on, the canal negotiates the final range of hills by means of a tunnel 3,530 feet long. The two canals command a total gross area of nearly 2 million acres, of which over 800,000 acres will be irrigated. On the Mysore Andhra side, a unique scheme has been evolved for growing crops. Called the dry come wet scheme, it is the outcome of 12 years of research. By adopting such a scheme, crops like cotton, jowar, wheat, maize and sugarcane have been grown with great success. With the release of the canal waters in 1953, a new life has begun for the people of this region. The long barren lands have blossomed for the first time in centuries. And as nature smiled, so did the people. In less than two years, freedom from famine has become reality. In round figures, it means 140,000 tons of food grains and 80,000 tons of commercial crops grown annually. And when the high level canal in Mysore Andhra is completed, production of food grains and commercial crops will be increased by another 50 purpose projects built by the concerted will and energy of our people shall bring blessings untold to future generations. The Tungabhadra are the temples of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs>